Hello, good evening, welcome. We're back, we're on, and it's Thursday evening, and where does the time go? Uh, yeah, I have had a day. Um, oh, nothing works. You write something that generates C sharp code from XML schema and which is not fun. Hey Confession, how's it going? Um Yeah, you generate some C sharp code from some XML schema and then you you run it against the sample XML that the people who gave you the and then you find out that they're not doing the XML right. And so then you have to change your XML generator to make it cope with, or your, your C sharp generator to make it cope with XML that's not right. And then your other thing that you've been working on, just you, you put out a new version of that and you find out that doesn't work. And you've got to undo a whole bunch of stuff that you did there. And yeah, it's fun. So. Instead of all of that, I'm just going to work on the fun thing that doesn't really matter, and and that'll be nice. Um, so yeah, um, more work on Stream Badger, which is my Maui and Blazor.net six app that makes things appear on the screen. Um, and yeah, I've been working on this for a while now, and went down a couple of blind alleys, um, started off Blazor application, then made it, wanted to make it into a kind of Windows application that maybe at some point I could put in the Windows store or, or whatever. Um, and so yeah, I was looking at Fotino, that didn't work. Um, so now we've switched over to .NET MAUI, multi-platform application user interface. That seems to be working okay so far. Um, been having some issues with the login thing, and I figured out what that was, um, and uh, and it was a fairly straightforward fix. Let me bring down the code for this, um, and we'll switch me over to small mark. Small mark's good, um, and yeah. So the flow for for authenticating is that you click the connect with Twitch button in your desktop application and it sends you to a page in the browser and then in the background it gets the um, the access token for Twitch so that it can connect with Twitch, which is good. Um, <clears throat> and so I had my, I've got my um, ASP.NET Core application here um, and it's just set up with using the um, ASP.NET Contrib Twitch authentication thing um, and so we add Twitch in here and we've got this on creating ticket that copies the access token and the refresh token and then in the controller here um, it uh, it was going to this thing and it was doing this bit down here saying if it's authenticated um, then uh, save the session data, otherwise don't. Okay, so why was that not working or why it worked, but then a little bit later it would not work. Um, and I figured it out. It's basically because the, um, the, the thing was getting written into the cookie that says the user's logged in in the browser. It's not running, hang on a moment. Let me run it. Okay, so we're going to do connect with Twitch. And there we go. And now it's logged in. Right, try it again, Des. Oh no, wait, wait, wait. Don't try it again. Let's do that and then we'll turn it on. Right, now try it again. Oh, hi, Mark. Yay! There we go. 
At some point, I'm going to have to get to a thing where um, I have this running and then the development version runs on a different port or something so that I can work on it but have it running on my thing and go, hey, Perry. Um, at some point, Disney are going to make me stop doing that as well. But yes, it works. It works. It works out of the box. And I'm, I'm super happy. Um, yep, there you go. You see, there's Perry. And then I can press my clear button and that goes away. And I can do the boom and that happens and all this sort of, yes. Um, so yeah, no, it is. Um, it's, it's working, working. Um, so the things, things that are not working, that, that's not working. That's definitely, that's definitely not working. And so that's what we're going to put back in today. Um, also we're going to figure out why the connect with Twitch button just disappears off the side there like that, because that should appear in there, but we'll, we'll figure that out. That's not a problem. So yeah, so let's shut that down. This was the other thing that it sort of struggles with, is stopping running. But I figured that out as well. I got it to, it sort of hangs for a minute because it's, it's basically doing a false shutdown on the, um, on the thing. Is there a spam denial of service feature? No, there's not. That's something that we'll have to, um, have to put in there. Um, that's a, so sort of a maximum number of times a picture can be shown per or you know the the amount of time that has to elapse after a picture has been shown or something after which it will just go nope not doing that yeah a, a cool down thing so yeah um, and we'll worry about getting the the chat thing um the not the chat the rewards thing the the stickers bit where you can spend your stickers and do like the the sad trombone sound and all that sort of thing um but yes it is it is going to a very good place i'm i'm really quite happy with this um cuz all the ones of these that i know of run um in the cloud i think there is one that's that's desktop based but the majority of them run in the cloud um, and I don't I don't want to pay for hosting um, and I want to make something that's kind of fun and stuff so yeah um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put back in the add image stuff today um, and the add sound so we're gonna add a uh, razor component and call it add image. And then you could, you could totally run this on a Raspberry Pi. Um, so I'm gonna go with, ooh, I reckon it would be possible to get it to run on a Raspberry Pi. That would be a, would that be a Raspberry Pi running? If you can get a Raspberry Pi running Windows on ARM, and you could get a touch screen on there, um, then you kind of make that into a whole thing. Um, yeah, we'll think about that later. So we go at page slash add image. And then let's go, I've got my old stream badger stuff here. Let's go and grab all of this and we'll just bring it in and we'll paste it in here. And we'll ignore the, the squiggles and stuff. Uh, 
Um, but yeah, the fun thing is is getting it getting a build to run on Linux potentially. Where's all this going? Right, so that's going there. So let's just run this up quickly. And then we go to add it, and there you go. So we've got choose file. And then we can go to 10%. See, there you go. That's that's the way we like it. Um, and then we can say padding dash top colon 25%. Like that. And margin left auto and margin right auto no Yeah, see that? That goes well. So let's let's tidy this up a bit and let's I'm gonna bring add sound back in. Okay, as well. So we're gonna add razor component add sound. And I don't seem to have implemented that at all yet. So let's just um, at page slash add sound. And then we'll have a div class equals container fluid and then we'll have a div dot row doesn't work in here equals col dash md col dash 12 and then we're going to have an edit form model equals something um, Do you exist anywhere? Yes, you do. Uh, where are you? Upload sound model. So we're going to have name and we're also going to have prop int volume. OK. And then we're going to have public add upload sound model that 
and then add image. So we had this. say on valid submit equals submit sound like that and class equals form for bootstrap and then we're going to have an input file on change equals on input file change and then let's go and grab this code from over here going to do this. Right. So what I want to be able to do is change the volume of this sound. So let's just run this. And then we're going to go to sounds. Oh, we don't have an add sound button yet. Uh, sound list. Image list. Let's grab that. And then we can put that there. Add sound, choose file, and then let's go to D, Twitch, audio, applause. So what's in here? I need to put that somewhere and then I want to be able to serve it from the application because what I want to be able to do 
is have a, a sort of a preview sound thing in here. So let's do this thing with that. Um, so sound store. Services um, sound temp. Why would you put it in? There, put it in Stream Badger. So this is going to be a service that lets me um, store a sound temporarily. So we are going to um, have a public add sound inject sound temp Sound temp. And then we're going to have public async task Stream, stream. And then we're going to say um, temp path Ugh. I wish Visual Studio would just add closed tabs to the right. That's in everything and it's just I want to be able to close tabs to the right, close tabs to the left. Um, that's one of the nicest things in code and rider and, and all the other IDEs and you just kind of like just can, how difficult is it? Come on put it in. So then we are going to say um, uh, 
underscore sound temp dot store async stream like that. I've got no IntelliSense. Right, I'm just going to have to run this again just to get the IntelliSense out of it. Oh, lordy. Right. Let's check the help on this. Wildcard characters are not supported. Okay, so. Clean up after ourselves, don't want to leave temp files lying around the place. So I browse a file. Nope, no docs for that. Let's go to dot net blazer there we go Content type is a string.
Right, and then we want to go to, let's go into shared and content types. want to be able to get the sort of canonical extension for the different um, content types. So audio, mime, types. Ignore in all case. And then let's have, so we'll do uh, audio slash MPEG um, audio slash OG audio slash mp3 no audio slash wav let's just support those to start off with and that's going to be mp3 and that's going to be og and that's going to be wav Content type, comma, out, extension. Turn that into an expression body. Um, to content type. Call this one content type to file extension. Try get content type string file extension. Not not when true out string question mark content type file extension to content type dot try get value file extension out content type there we go so two-way look up there um, so if anyone's kind of new to hasn't done much with c sharp 9 or c sharp 8 um, we introduced this thing with nullable annotations. So if we go into the project code here and edit the project file. Um, so we do nullable now to say this thing could potentially return null, but you can use this attribute that tells the C-sharp null checker um, 
that it's it's not if this method returns true then this will not be null and so you don't need to check it for null which is kind of handy um, and then that's going to be audio slash mpeg and this is going to be audio slash an audio wav like that okay and on the file extension we're just going to do trim start dot to take off the um, <coughs> leading dot if it has it so then in here we're going to say if um, content types dot try get file extension content type comma out var extension Just going to say extension equals mp mp3 then we're going to say using uh, var target equals file dot create temp file and await stream dot copy to async target make that an await using make that a using declaration and there we go And we're just going to return that file name back out of there like that. So then in here, we're going to say var file name equals. temp file name is going to be set to whatever that is and then in here we're going to put an at if underscore temp file name is length greater than zero and then we're going to put an audio element in there like that and if we jump into overlay here, overlay sound,
like that. So we're going to bring the code in there. Like that. What about Right, and then we've got a play button there like that. Um. Blazer button. at on click equals at on click equals play sound So that's going to do something down here. And then in here we can say if underscore temp file name is null return because we don't want to do nothing. And then in here, we're going to do a wait JS invoke void async play sound thing there. Like that. Play sound is here. And then that's going to go into the stream badger pages no, index.html. And we're going to stick it in there like that. that's going to become volume and then we are going to HTML5 audio volume is between naught and one I'm guessing Then we say element 
dot volume equals volume. So then we inject JS runtime. And then we want to put 0 0.1 in there for the time being and this is just going to be um, temp underscore sound like that And then we can say await invoke async state has changed like that. Right now we need to add this sound temp to the services in here. So services dot Add singleton sound temp. Add Blazor web view. Where is this going to come from? This is not... Okay. So, take you out of there and put you in there. And then we're going to do public async task string string get path string name Say var extension equals path dot get extension 
name. Do that. Oh dear, I am melting. So yeah, what I want to be able to do is get the um, Content types dot try get content type extension come out var content type content type equals audio slash mpeg yeah and then return path content type like that. I don't need the task or that doesn't need to be asynchronous. So this can become Okay, so that goes in there like that as well. <sighs> so check to see whether it exists and make sure it does exist and all this sort of stuff. So let's go over to overlay because we can actually serve stuff from here. Um, let's go into endpoints. And let's go into, let's create a new class and call it temp sounds. can say var temp equals context dot request services dot get required service temp sounds no sound temp Not sound temp dot try get path 
sound comma out var path out var content type context dot response dot Send file async. So if we can't find it in there, or it's null for some reason, then we're going to do 404. this do using the send file extension There we go. That's what we need to do is we need to say context.response.content type equals content type like that. So we're going to say services dot add singleton sound temp and then in our add sound page here slash temp slash sounds. So that's going to become HTTP colon slash slash local host colon 25293 temp sounds thingy. Temp slash sounds like that. Okay. (laughs) 
So, sounds, add sound, choose file. So, content type is audio slash MPEG. Temp file is going to be that. That's going to be that. And then that's going to do that. And then if I click play, it worked. I can't believe that worked. Brilliant. So then the only thing left to do then is um, go into add sound here. that up there like that and then we're going to say div class equals row div class equals col dash six and then input number and then how can we turn this into a range uh, bootstrap Docs, forms, range. Use our custom range inputs for consistent cross browser styling. Grab that, and we're going to put that in there like that. At find Naught to one step is going to be that. laser bind value bind dash value equals that bind dash value colon event equals
So that should be dash value. Make that a float and we'll set it to one by default. And run. Sounds, add sound. Choose file. That doesn't seem to be making any difference because I haven't changed that. So underscore model dot volume. And let's just jump back up here. I'm going to make that a col2 and run that because as it was, this was like super loud. This was way too loud. So sounds, add sound, choose file, applause. Because yeah, that was I'm not going to do it like that. Yeah. Really super loud. Um, sorry, you can't hear that, can you? Let me do this and then... Um, there you go. See, it's playing. Um, so that's good. And then we're going to have a div class equals row let's just jump back to here um, Need to put class form control on here.
So, hang on, range. Do that like that. BTN dash success. Sorry, I'm not talking very much. Oh, finding it hard to chat while I do this. So that does that, and that does that, and then we've got the volume there, and then we've got the name there like that. Sounds, add sound, oh. Something's just gone terribly wrong there. Uh, output.
invalid operation exception in system okay so let's go to let's stop debug Ag. exception settings invalid operation exception and run sounds add sound forms input text requires a value for the value expression parameter okay blazer input text at bind dash value okay Add sound. Choose file. Applause. <laughs> That's what we want. Um, so that's good. So then we can just put required on here. And required on here. And then we can at inject sound Go and find sound store in here, and this is going to be And then, okay, so we, we're going to pass in that temp path that we've got there. So we're going to say um, Hi, real gavel, how are you doing? How long have I been coding for my life? Um, so I've been coding professionally since 1989 so 32 years which is a nice round number um, I wrote my first ever code in my entire life when I was nine years old which was 30, 39 years ago um, yeah back in 1982 I got a Sinclair ZX81 
um, which was a one of the first ever computers that you could buy in the UK just to use at home. Um, the ZX81, yeah, you can ask me anything you like. That's what the chat is there for. Please just, yeah, go for it. Um, but yeah, ZX81 had 1K of memory. Um, literally 1,024 bytes, and some of those were used, so you didn't have access to them. So yeah, I'm old. So I want to start learning coding, but I found out about this GPT-3 AI thing, oh yeah, um, that you tell it in English, make me a to-do list, and it makes, and I was worried that will that automate coding, because I really love coding, and I want to do this for the rest of my life, but I am afraid of this new AI that will come in the future. That's an extremely good question. Um, so I'm guessing you're kind of uh, high school age or... Um, Certainly at the start of your career rather than, yeah, 17 years old. Um, <clears throat> I think a lot of people at the moment are afraid that artificial intelligence is going to put them out of a job. Um, but I think, uh, and, and for some of those people, you know, yeah. Um, but coding... Um, being the people who actually write the computer code, um, I think that's going to be one of the last things to go. Um, because, yeah, okay, so GPT-3 at the moment can write some code and um, and it can... The, the point where GPT-3 is interesting is more... If you've got a massive database, um, you could probably get GPT-3 to the point where you could say, I want to know this, and it will figure out the query to send to the database to get that information for you. Um, but, yeah, um, I write a bunch of code every day, and I am not at all worried that GPT-3 is, is going to replace me anytime soon. Um, the world is going to need programmers for a long time, um, probably for longer than it needs a lot of other um, jobs that are out there, because everything these days, everything in the world is software. Um, you don't think about it, but the number of things in the world that are driven by software, and there's programmers behind all of it, um, so yeah, I, I would not worry. Um, and if you love coding, then you're very lucky because it just so happens that coding is, um, is a really well paid job and yeah, you can make a lot of money, um, writing code. Um, and you can have a lot of fun and you can work on a lot of different diverse things. I've written code. Um, I mean, in the last, let's say the last 10 years, um, I've written code that runs on uh, phones, that runs on tablets, that runs on um, massive servers, that runs on the cloud. I've written some game code. I've written some web code. I've, I, I wrote something that ran on a fridge um, about 10 years ago, and that was fun. 
Um, and yeah, you know, there's there's a bunch of stuff. I, I'm currently I'm writing code that writes code. Um, but yeah, no, do not worry that the coding jobs are going to go away because of GPT-3. Um, they're not. There will be plenty of work around for coders for um, for a long time to come. It'll be one of the last jobs to go. And the reason it will go is that we will have created sufficiently advanced intelligent machines that we don't need to do anything anymore. And we can fill our days and our lives doing whatever we want to do. And at that point, you can carry on coding, but you can code whatever you want to code. Um, whether that be games or music or, you know, all sorts of stuff, insane amounts of stuff, um, you will be able to code those. Um, so yeah, no, go for it. Definitely, definitely um, do that. Very, very long time away from now. Um, I mean, if you're 17, then I, I do a talk. Let me find my talk um, for you. Uh, Futurology for developers. Um, build stuff. No, hang on. Here you go. So here's a talk I gave at a conference. Um, but yes, so that talk is look back at the last 30 years, everything I've seen in my career, and then kind of extrapolating that forwards. Um, I reckon that in 30, 40 years, then AI may very well have kind of gone rah and and taken over the world, um, but um, I'm I'm an optimist and I believe that that's going to lead to what they call luxury communism. Um, so a post scarcity society combination of um, AI and advances in sort of quantum computing and things like that. And also things like 3D printing. 3D printing at the moment is quite primitive, but um, in 30 or 40 years, the chances are you're going to be able to 3D print a virtual reality headset um, just by kind of going that one, and it'll just and then you go away for an hour or something. Um, so yeah, um, I think for people, my daughter's 15. Um, and I've got a son who's 10. Um, and I think there's the potential for the world to be really um, uh, uh, interesting in a good way, not in the old may you live in interesting times curse thing, but actually uh, uh, positive changes. Um, so within your lifetime, you might see AI that um, borders on creative, um, but... Yeah. Um, at the moment, it is certainly true that AI lacks creativity. Um, and uh, it lacks it lacks so much. AI at the moment, it's, it's basically stupid. Um, it can do a, a very narrow range of things. So it can recognise, you can sort of recognise images and it can play games and, and all this sort of stuff, but it can't think. It can't, um, it, it has no capacity for abstract thought. And so if you say to it, um, find the best algorithm for doing something, then it might be able to do that. But it'll be hideous. You won't have the faintest idea how it works. You'll just know it works really well. But if you said to a, an AI, design a really nice user interface or um, make a game, then, you know, 
it would just kind of go what i don't know i don't know I, I don't know how to do that um you think you go to a per one person and say make a game and they make call of duty another person say make a game they make forza another person makes fortnite another person makes um tetris it's that um that creativity is is currently uniquely human um and the thing i was saying about the point in the future where we get um ai can do the sort of the boring stuff and and the manufacturing and the logistics and the deliveries and probably running the farms and growing the vac grown meat and and flying the planes and driving what and all that sort of stuff and what it'll free us up to do is create and we'll be able to spend our lives kind of making stuff to make the world a better place or just to make other people happy. I think that's going to be really awesome. Um, but no, certainly, um, if you love coding and you want to do it as a job, then A, I totally recommend it and, and I wouldn't try and put you off. It's a brilliant thing to do for a job. And B, yeah. GPT-3 is, is not going to put you out of work for a very, very long time. Um, in the same way that, you know, they've got computers now that can sort of scan patient records and predict that they might have a tumour or a, a particular disease or something, but those are not going to replace doctors anytime soon. Okay, so this is going to do this, and then in my addsound.razor, we're going to say await underscore sound store dot add async. Um, temp path and model temp file name you're very welcome and thank you very much for the follow and please stop by any time and ask questions love to be asked questions Right, let's see if this works. Add sound, choose file. Applause. Call it applause. Why would you do that? Sounds, add sound, choose file, applause, do that. And save, and then F11. Target file is that. Copy that. Oh.
give that one more try. Sounds, add sound, choose file, applause, call it applause, set the volume to 50%, save, step into there. So temp file is that and target file is that. System.io.io exception. Why? Already exists. Overwrite it. Step into there. Excellent. And then we just want to go up to here and we want to say at inject navigation manager navigation. Underscore navigation dot laser navigation manager. Navigate to Navigate to slash like that. go that works and then sounds and then the last thing that we need to do is so if we go to um, sound store and we do get sound sound model
and we're going to pass in the volume there like that. And then in our overlay, we've got our overlay sound. Got our host.cshtml and we're going to add in ID volume element dot volume equals volume. I think that's right. Yep. So then our overlay sound. Sound dot volume like that. And we're just going to go to my users directory users mark app data roaming um, app data local stream badger sounds let's just open this up in code So in applause here in info.json we've got name is applause and volume is 0.5 and then here we got that and we're going to say volume colon one and save that like that. And so now if we do this And then we go back to OBS and we refresh our overlay and make it visible. And then we go to sounds and we play. <laughs> playing there. All right. OK. Excellent, that's, that's gone really well. Things have worked and we can go, well, hey, Perry and, um, and boom and Perry and, and do things like that. Um, and we'll figure out more stuff about that um, soon. So yeah, we'll come back and we'll do the image overlay stuff um, in the uh, next stream, which will be on Tuesday next week at 7 p.m. UK time, 6 p.m. UTC. Um, thanks everyone for stopping by. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening. Enjoy your weekends. And I will see you again next week. Take care. Cheers. Bye.